Every Jones Racing product kit is completely assembled in the box. Underneath the first layer of foam, you'll find instructions for your all in there. Correct instructions for priming the power steering pump. Options for return line with fittings. Spare belts, one for the all-nair kit, one for power steering. Complete all-nair kit. Assembled, all the correct bolts, spacers, flat washers, lock washers, all in one kit. Next you'll find your complete bottom drive hub, containing the pulley, retaining bolt, and your three hex bolts to hold the drive hub tight to the balancer. The next piece is the water pump pulley and all near cog drive pulley. Once again, bolts and flat washers are included. The last piece is power steering pump, integrated aluminum tank, the drive belt, and complete bracket assembly with all the correct tech spacers, mounting hardware, and options for 3 8 or 7 16 depending on which head Ford Racing is sent to you. The first step in installing your Jones Racing Products 1565 ARCE crate engine kit for the Ford 347 crate motor is going to be to check and see whether the head has come with 3 8 or 7 16 threaded holes. This one has come with 7 16 so we'll go ahead and get all three of our studs and 7 16 into the head. In a 730 seconds Allen wrench. Snug these in. This will boil, this will be uh, our retaining for our hex standoffs. Come as part of power steering kit. We'll then screw the hex standoffs onto those 7 16 studs we put in the head. Just tighten them down by hand for now. We're going to come back and tighten them later with a 7 8 wrench. Get all three of these in here, hand tight. And since the pump has already come assembled on the bracket, all we need to do is line up our three flathead bolts. Once again, using the 7 30 second Allen wrench, tighten these down into our studs. So we've got all three started. Slide the pump out of our way, give us a little more room to work on everything. See the bracket sits tightly against all three of the 7 8 tech standoffs. It's important to double check this to make sure that all three are touching equally. That way you know you won't have any misalignment issues. We'll get a complete kit like this from, from us. Everything should line up perfectly just like this one has. It's nice when you're working with a motor coming directly from an engine manufacturer because you know all the heads, the water pumps, balancers, and all are going to remain the same. We'll snug down those three bolts, flat heads in the front. Now we'll come back and tighten our 7 8 hex standoffs tight against the head. Once all three of these are tight, we'll come back and finish tighten the flathead allen bolts in the front. And that's how easy it is to install the power steering end of this kit. You'll notice that with this pump and integrated tank, we've designed all our brackets with a horizontal slot for belt adjustment in and out. The reason you see ours done this way is, rather than having a hole and an arc or a pivot, you never have to worry about tilting the tank crooked when you're doing your belt adjustment. It's always a horizontal adjustment. Next we're going to move on to our bottom drive hub. And for the crate motors, we do a 3 and 3 quarter bottom pulley to ensure the ratio is correct for both motor pump and power steering. Once again, you see how easy it is to get all these pieces on and assemble because they've all come to you in the box with all the right fasteners and hardware. 
as we're tightening down this last one, you'll notice there is a bolt in the end of this drive hook. The only job of this bolt is to retain the pulley and the hex drive nut on the back side onto the mandrel. It doesn't go all the way through and tighten down into the balancer. We're utilizing Ford's original balancer bolt underneath to hold the balancer tight just the way the motor came out of the crate. The advantage to that is we don't have an extra long bolt going all the way out of the crank through the balancer and through all our parts all the way to the tip which is going to carry those harmonics all the way to the front of the drive. Very important to focus on stopping the harmonics at the balancer where they need to stop not to bring them forward to the tip of the drive. That's why this one is done this way. All three of our x head bolts are tight with a 916 16th wrench. So the next thing we're going to do is move on to our water pump drive. As we stated earlier, everything comes completely assembled in the box. So on the back side, you'll see retaining nuts. Their only purpose is to hold the drive together in shipping. So we'll go ahead and take these two off and set them aside. Set this up on the water pump shaft. Start our two 5 16 fine bolts. Once again, like we stated earlier, when a motor comes complete like this right out of the crate, it's nice because you know that this kit is going to flow right on nice and easy, just like it is here. Because the manufacturer is supplying the same water pump, balancer, and head combination to everyone. So that's just how simple that water pump drive is. The reason it comes with the two bolts in the kit is the majority of guys are going to run a fan, fan spacer in the front. So they'll be able to remove these, put their fan and fan spacer on the same as they normally would. And part of the kit that we'll show you later is a bushing that sets in the front to register that fan spacer, which is very important because you always want everything to run concentric, whether it be from the balancer forward or the water pump forward, always concentric. So that register bushing is going to do that for our fan spacer when we get to that point. With this Ford 347, we're going to mount our add-on alternator kit on the passenger side. So what we do is remove these two 7, 5 16 bolts over here that came from Ford because this is where we are going to bolt our alternator kit on. Once again, the alternator kit use, utilizes the same 78 hex standoffs. They're nice because you only have to have a short stud going into the block that way instead of real long bolts. So what we'll do is once again unscrew these from the bracket and thread them right into the block. Hand tight. Just like we did on the power steering earlier. Same thing for the bottom. Like we talked about with everything being completely assembled in the box when you receive it and open it makes your life so much easier because you know all the right parts and spacing has all been predetermined so a kit will flow right onto the motor without any problems what we'll do then is start our two bolts here and on the back side we always support our alternators because even though they're a lightweight one wire alternator the extra support never hurts so what we do is reach up and grab one of these head bolts you can either use the 7 16 or the 3 8 this kit already has the 3 8 bolt with it so we'll go ahead and use the 3 8 hole in the bottom here 7 16 is part of the kit it does come with if you decide or opt to use the top hole so once again what we'll do is eye up our alignment ensure that we have the bracket touching against each standoff top and bottom and snugly against the water pump and no gaps between the head or the back the back support arm and we go ahead and tighten down our back support arm once again we'll tighten down our 7 8 hex standoffs against the water pump tying the alternator kit the water pump the timing cover all tight to the block as we did earlier, now we'll come up forward and tighten down our two Allen bolts in the front. Your alternator belt drive belt is with your bracket, so what we'll do is just swing the alternator off to the side, slide our belt out, set our alternator back up toward the top of the bracket, 
and we're going to install our serpentine belt. One thing that's really cool about all our kits, all of our pulleys have one extra groove on them more than what the belts do. The main reason for that is ease of alignment. In the future, if a water pump ever gets changed out, or something gets changed on the bottom balance or something along those lines, you don't need to panic if your alignment is off a little bit. All you need to do is favor the belt forward or back one groove. And that is the reason we always have one extra groove in all our pulleys. For a standard crate motor kit like this, how we talked about numerous times now, the uh, alignment is going to be perfect because all the same items are being used by the manufacturer. So what we'll go ahead and do is tighten up our power steering. That is our belt tension, power steering pump. It's very important, never pull in the tank. Always tension the pump from the inside out. And with the nuts encapsulated on the back side of the bracket, it makes it very easy to go ahead and adjust this with just one half inch wrench from the front. Serpentine belt only needs about 65 or 70 pounds of belt tension. So we don't need to get real carried away with making it super tight. That's one of the reasons this is such a cool kit. All the lightweight components combined with less belt tension create less friction and drag. By doing that, we're going to free up more horsepower. And with the crate motors, that's a must. So now we'll simply just add on our alternator belt here. Slide our alternator out. Half inch wrench again. The cog belt only needs six pounds of tension, which is hardly any. The best way to check that is, once you've got this assembled and snugged down, you're going to be able to slide the belt front to back with your fingertips across the pulley. If it's so tight that you can't move it, we need to just loosen up a tick. And obviously you don't want it to flop back and forth. It should just push front to back. And with it being guided front and back on the water pump side and on the other side, six pounds is all we need. And once again, by running less belt tension, it's going to free up some more horsepower because we're not creating all that extra drag. So now all we need to do is go around and double check all our bolts, make sure everything's tight. We'll start with this front, bottom, on the air bolt because we didn't do that one earlier. That's tight. We'll move back here to the head bolt, which is our rear support arm, and we're good there. Now we're back to a half inch wrench for just about everything else. We'll check our upper alternator bolt. On snug, we'll come back to our power steering that we've adjusted our belt tension by pushing on the pump from the inside out, not pulling on the tank. Top and bottom, both good. We've done all the Allen bolts earlier, so we know they're tight, both on the alternator kit and the power steering, and same with all our hex standoffs. The last thing we'll do, 9 16 wrench one more time, double check our bottom three drive hub bolts, and they are tight. From Jones Racing Products, your bottom bolt comes to you tight because the key is already in the pulley. It's already completely assembled. So that is done. The last and most important thing to do is double check your belt alignment. Like we talked about numerous times, since this kit came for this crate motor, all your alignment is going to be perfect. You'll see how that just slides across the front edge of that power steering pulley. So that means alignment from crank to water Crank to power steering is perfect. Now we'll check from power steering over to water pump once. And you'll see once again, we're perfect. It just slides across the front of that water pump pulley. One thing that's nice about all the drives you'll see from Jones Rains products, the front thickness of every pulley is always the same. So you're able to grab a straight edge and check across any surface to maintain proper belt alignment. And then the only thing we need to do now is check our alternator for the correct alignment on there also. And you'll see that it just just goes past the front edge so we're perfect as far as that alignment goes also and that's just how simple it is to install a Jones Racing Products 1565 ARC on your 347 Ford engine. Okay we're gonna go over the items that you'll have left over as after you're done uh, complete installation of your 1565 kit on the crate engine you'll have the two water pump bolts remaining right from Ford that we took out earlier to put our all-near kit on so you can just set those aside um, in this bag, as part of your kit, came three shims, one sixteenth of an inch thick. We didn't need to use these because we had proper belt alignment across all three with the straight edge and we checked. Um, if you come across an issue where the water pump has to be bumped out a little bit, one, two shims uh, may need to be used, but in most circumstances they won't need to be. Our Ford Motorsports, or Ford Racing Pump, came with a three quarter shaft, so we didn't need this bushing. The job of this is to go from a 5 8 shaft on the water pump to the three-quarter ID in all the pulleys. So if you have the 5.8 shaft pump, you'll need to use this. Ours had the three-quarter, so we'll set that aside once again with those bolts not needed. The candy, that's for the customer. Now, moving on to the alternator. 
you'll get a wiring diagram for how to properly wire the alternator and a switch. The way we like to see it done, 10 or 12 gauge wire from the positive post of the alternator, which is the B post up top, double nutted, directly to the positive post of the battery with a switch in line. The reason we do that is if a customer ever has to put a battery charger or a jumper pack or anything like that on the race car in a hurry, we like to be able to have a way of isolating the alternator from that extra current or charge being produced. So simply turn the switch off. That is the switch's job. Next thing we need to go over are our power steering options. You'll find complete directions on the proper way of priming your new Jones Racing power steering pump into the system, whether it be a rack or a steering box. Just need to follow all those easy steps. Make sure you have uh, no air bubbles in the system. One thing that's very nice about the Jones power steering pump and integrated tank is the option of using different return line fittings. The pump itself will come to you with a 90 and a plug. You have the option to run your return line either in the bottom side of the tank or the side. One thing that's nice about having the fittings available is you can decide to run 45 out the bottom, straight out the bottom, 90 out the bottom, plug the top, whatever is best for your application. If you have an A-frame that's close to the side, you can now utilize the bottom. Moving on, the next thing we'll have will be your two spare belts. Every Jones Racing Products complete kit comes with spare belts. That way, when you're at the racetrack, if something should happen, you always have a spare belt there in the toolbox to bail you out, let you race the rest of the night. The last thing you'll have, your Jones Racer Products catalog to check through, see all the cool things we make, and then set of decals.